dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created in I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream. The life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. permeates every surface of our social and political world. Although he was assassinated almost 50 years ago, his vision and hypnotic voice linger, ghost-like, in the background of every conversation that touches upon race, the state of black America, and this nation's multiracial future. He marched and inspired he was threatened, arrested, and stabbed. He was followed by those who felt as he did, that we as a nation will overcome. Dr. King was not only a civil rights activist, but he was also this country's preeminent moral philosopher, a father and a husband. These diverse roles were the foundation for his dream that inspired millions worldwide. Activism is doing something that a lot of people either are trying to stop you from or people that really just don't want you to do it or don't like you to do it. Activism, activism is standing up for what you believe in and fighting for change for a system that does not work for you or does not work for those that you care about. I don't think it's changed necessarily. The act of activism is still very much the same. You believe in something, you stand up for it, and then you fight against some sort of power that is repressing you. You have to believe in something and you have to stand up for something. So I think it's super important that everyone, students, grown-ups, people, the world, believes in something and actively seeks out to get their rights for it, to fight for it, to stop something from happening. So I think if you don't believe in something, then you're wasting your time. Dr. King understood that race was just one component. There was economic oppression, there was a war going on, there's still a war going on overseas. So he started to pick apart all of these things that keep us separated and said, hey, why are we, why are we overseas funding a war, funding the military, and not spending money at home on social uplift? There's something wrong with that. And I think that that question is still relevant today. It's been 50 years and that question has still not been answered. The way I think it has changed, activism between Dr. Martin Luther King's time and now, I guess the biggest change is social media. Like we get information instantly. Word travels a lot faster. There is a double-edged sword with that. You can organize people at a, a drop of a hat, at just a blink of an eye, you can get people together in Times Square at any location. Uh, the organization of, with uh, social media and the internet and the information age is um, you know, fast forward us to uh, a point where we didn't even think we could. Those who fought for civil rights with Dr. King are fading into the history books. In light of recent events, such as the Michael Brown and Eric Gardner cases, are the leaders for this generation as visible? I think a lot of it has to do with social media just because everybody can do it from the convenience of being inside or just with their small community. Nobody really wants to take the step forwards to be like, okay, we need to get out there and physically do this. Like with Dr. Martin Luther King, he went to jail and uh, so did a lot of other people back then that were strong leaders. Um, and I don't think anybody wants to take on that responsibility. There's so much online. There's anonymous, there's hacker groups that do this sort of thing just recently because of the Paris attacks. Anonymous attacked a bunch of, bunch of Al Qaeda websites and took them down. They're just not very public anymore. So I think activism is still very much alive and there's still leaders out there. It's just more dangerous for them. I believe that we, again, idolize Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and that we still want them to be our leaders. Um, we do truly miss them and we believe that, you know, we really cannot usually get anyone like them again. I think racism 
will always be a thing. It's human nature. Uh, I think it's ignorant to say racism is dead, but um, I also think it's partially ignorant to say that we haven't made progress. It's in the microaggressions. It's in the, can I touch your hair? You know, oh, you're not a rapper, or do you play sports? Or, you know, myself, I'm Mexican. You know, the assumptions about my own culture and my background. I mean, we get better every generation. Where I think, even though people say we're the most screwed up generation and all this other stuff, I think we're the most accepting generation ever. Like, we're more accepting of gay people, lesbians, black or white, like I feel like we're way more accepting than any other generation has ever been in any type of way. I believe that what he came to accomplish has, at least for the most part, been achieved. I think Martin Luther King would be very happy with where America is today. And uh, I don't think he even imagined that 40, 50 years after him, a black man would be leading the country, you know? So I think in some ways his dream did come alive and it's a way, way better world than the one he lived in. Someone like Martin Luther King would not ever stop being an activist. He would still be out there for some cause because that's just the kind of person he was. So I think even today he'd find something to fight for and part of his dream might be alive, but there's still plenty more to go. In fact, if you go to Toledo, Ohio, there's a beautiful mural of Dr. King um, on a wall, and it, it says, still dreaming. And that, I think, is a beautiful reminder that we still have a long way to go. in the world. I'm tired of shooting. I'm tired of hate. I'm tired of selfishness. I'm tired of evil. I'm not going to use violence no matter who says it.